First and goal for Colorado. The first two plays were critical. When they stopped no gain, they can almost sense play pass here. You'll see the defensive back in position, really, to make a play. Dave McLuhan could have been there. The ball had to have been thrown much Craig sooner Hendrick. to make any difference. Here's Craig Hemprick, who missed two long tries in the first half. This one is 23 yards, and it is just good. It was looking left, but from short range, it made a throw. So the Irish take the kickoff to start the second half, and Lou Holtz's team builds his lead by three more. Ten minutes left in the period. It's now the Irish nine and the Buffaloes three. Kickoff time tonight in the 70s as you look down on the historic Orange Bowl where the Irish have a field goal to add to their touchdown. The extra point was blocked, accounting for the 9-3 score. Charles E. Johnson, not related to Charles S. Johnson, will take over quarterback. A freshman is the deep man. There's Charles S. Very high and short. McClellan at the 25. And Dave McClellan to the 36. So good position for Colorado. Dave McClellan on the kickoff return. There's a little rumbling around on the field between players, Dick, but both teams are really solid, solid young guys with great programs. You don't see the animated posturing around after each tackle's made. These guys are here to play football, and that's why I think they're they're here to find out who's number one. So Charles Johnson, it's in his hands for the final three minutes. Unbalanced lines the wide field. yardage on the first play. George Williams having a big game and Devon McDonald on the tackle. There's Williams who was academically ineligible at Notre Dame last year and so that long agony of waiting for his chance and now the senior the 6'3", 298 pounder nicknamed Big Boo. He's the guy, he's the guy Dick, that the Colorado coaches had the most respect for on that defensive team. They think he's really well he is, really a load he just pulls down this side of the line is coming. Johnson again to Hemingway. And he uh, he's out about here. the 40 for a gain of three more. So it'll be third down and long. Michael Stonebreaker in on that tackle, number 42. They've got to be setting up something. They run the same play twice with the unbalanced line. There's got to be a play pass or a reverse or something off of it because they're just not giving themselves a chance. They're just playing too conservatively. Well, wouldn't you think, though, you know, here's Johnson with all the pressure of the game and coming on now to give him a couple simple plays, no, no option, just give it to the fullback to get yourself into the contest? I guess so. Makes sense. That's Pritchard in motion. And Johnson going to throw. Not a good pass at all. Standing away, and the Buffaloes will have to punt. You almost have to say, when you're on the left hash mark in college ball, sprint out to the right and throw the ball. But when you're on the right hash mark going left, it's so tough on that quarterback to run left and throw right-handed. so tough to throw an, uh, an accurate pass of any kind. And yet they do. Everybody does it. Ismail waiting for his third chance to return. Ruin, who, after muffing the first snap, has kicked brilliantly. Sends this one end over end and high. Ismail, no fair catch at the 22. To the sidelines and out of bounds at the 35. Ismail. 13 more yards for the Rocket. Timeout with eight and a half left in the third. The Irish, 9-3. And it's 33 seconds left in the third period. The Irish leading the Buffaloes 9 to 3. Notre Dame starts from its 35 after the 12-yard punt return by Rocket Ismail. And they give to Waters right up the middle. And he gains fumbles the ball. A scramble at the 40. There is a fumble on the play. And we'll wait for the official announcement. Which way? Colorado says they've got it. They do. to be Paul Rose, 46, who recovered. Coming around the block of the tight end, and the ball just bounces to him. It's out now, and it comes right the over the ball. Paul Goes underneath Rose. everybody to make the Outside stop. That's really an effort. Colorado has to do something There's right. Five yard gain on the play. 40 yard line, they've got field Rose position. Recovered. They have First to get in there at least for three points. If they can't get it here, 
It looks just like last year's game being repeated. Credit Chad Brown, 34, with a tackle that dislodged the ball, and Brown has been the defensive star for Colorado tonight. First down at the Irish 40-yard line, the second turnover for Colorado. But look for something. This is the same formation as those off-tackle plays. Look for something else. It's the enemy. Not yeah, much there at all. Carrier. A couple of yards, well, that, and they run on Dick, first down. Uh, yeah, it's 14. There are 15 first downs, Dick. 14 have been runs by Colorado. And you can do that, I think, in the Big 8 and with some of the opposition. But Notre Dame is just too sophisticated to, do, to think you're going to dominate them in that fashion. That time they went unbalanced to the wide field and then ran back to the short side. 86, Rico Smith coming in as you see Simmons go out. But Smith, a junior, a JC transfer from Cerritos College, may be the fastest man on the team. They feel he can get deep if anyone can. 10.35 and 100 meters, three different times in his life. They go down the middle and wide open at the tight end. Sean Brown, first down at the 22. Well, there was the play pass we talked about. He knew it would Willie come Clark, sooner or later. Unbalanced line, fake the run, and then throw it back. So they set it up with those run fakes. Faking the same thing. Now the tight end slipping right down the seat. And well thrown to Brown. Now, Brown's a prospect in many ways. This guy has got the size. He's the best blocking tight end Colorado's maybe, well, had in many, many years. So from the 22. Unbalanced line. Harold Johnson to the enemy. To the 20-yard line. And a good defensive surge again by the white-jerseyed Irish, led by Chris Zorich and Devon McDonald. Chris Zorich, the tackler. You'll see an unbalanced line. They will take the left tackle, Solomon, and move him over to the right side. They simply have a guard and a center on the weak side. You'll see right here, and the extra tackle will be on that side. And what they want is to get the defense to shift over and not really adjust adequately because they're really new to that adjustment system with the unbalanced line and extra man to the wide field. There it is again. Gary Barnett, the offensive coordinator, his first game in that position. Johnson, complete to Hemingway. And the fullback barrels to the 12, close to a first down. He's got a first down, Colorado. Zorich trailing the play, got a piece of him. And did Stonebreaker and DeBose, who had uh, trouble getting him to the turf. And Hemingway just loops right out of the backfield. This is something that uh, they haven't been able... This is the first time, Dick, I've seen them do this kind of thing and execute it well enough to get it done. And maybe it's Johnson. Well, as a man who made uh, a lot of uh, victories happen in that short passing game of yours, you do appreciate the value of a short pass and a run. Well, it just takes the heat off that... Colorado offensive line. They're not going to hammer every play. And you, did you use some unbalanced line in the NFL? We did in the Super Bowl in 81. You want me to go into that litany? I can take no, no. 10 or 12 minutes. <laughs> Dick, there was a time when Billy Let's Ring stay with the get back to this game. It is not a first down, as you can see. Third and a couple of links on the chain for Bill McCartney. Oh, What's your call down. here? You know Notre Dame's going to stack it up looking for the enemy. Go over the top with the enemy. Over the It'll top. Third Don't try to dig in. You're the 12 he can jump over the top and make it. 9-3. Notre Dame leads Colorado. 6-19 left in the third period. Third down and in inches. Hemingway for a couple. 
they've got to get six, obviously, or seven when it's finally done. And if they go over the top, they can get real close on this next play. Don't ball, do anything ball, fancy. The they've they've got their there. big playoff play, play, two play fake, but right now, go right in there and get the score. If you're number one, you'll get it right up over the top. Rico Smith a bit late getting to the huddle with the play. That, that uh, Dick, that uh, first drive, when they threw the ball twice, right on the goal line, they can't do it this time. They've got to get in there with it on the ground. Smith way out to the left, and Todd Light takes him. There's the play clock. It's Johnson near the goal line. He's to the one, maybe inside. It was Johnson, as you remember, against Missouri in the infamous fifth down game. With a couple of seconds remaining, Johnson barely squeaked in on a play much like that one to give Colorado a very hard-earned 33-31 win, and some would say hard-earned is hardly the proper description of that victory. Inside the one. Cincinnati Bengals uh, will go at it with the winner advancing on to the AFC Divisional Playoffs against the LA Raiders the following week. That's the AFC Wild Card Game Sunday, 12:30 Eastern, only on NBC Sports NFL Live at 12. That game's got to be as tight as any game in the NFL. Last time uh, Boomer got his team up 40 to 20. You like that Cody Carlson, the back of the like for Houston? I like Cody. I liked him coming out of Baylor. He does all the things Moon does, and with the same poise. So when, when Warren Moon does step away, I think Carlson will be very, very comparable uh, in that run-and-shoot offense. They called uh, the teammates number 14, Pat Bluto, but he told me that's only the pronunciation when it gets really freezing, freezing in Boulder. It's Bluto. Well, Colorado's in trouble here. They, they kicked off out, out of bounds. Now they move it back five, and they still have to be confronted with the Ismail. And he comes up to get it at the 26, the 35. 
Joseph Lou Holtz is what his teams do on kick return. In his five years at Notre Dame, he's had no less than 13 touchdowns off punt and kickoff returns. There it is, eight of them on kickoff and five punts. Jimmy Brown being a factor. Ricky Waters has returned a couple, and of course, uh, Ismail with six First himself 10, 42. to tie an NCAA record. So much of that's just the discipline of his team. Uh, their mechanics, uh, their fundamentals, executing these returns much like you do anything else in the game. The quick pass to Ismail. As Lou Holtz has said, that he's like a Pekingese barking at a German Shepherd. He doesn't know how small he is, but that's the <laughs> kind of thought they're inside. It'll be interesting, Dick, the NFL also draft. In Alex my opinion, Ismael is not going to be a, a, a guy to draft if you're a team that you're building, and that, you're, that you need big, powerful, tough guys to get over the 500 mark. He's the kind of guy that'll make you fully dimensional if you have a very good or great team. Is he a wide so, receiver or running back? Well, I, I, you use a combination, but he's not going to make your franchise. He's not going to do that. The give to Brooks. He may have fumbled and the scramble and Colorado says they have it again. The Buffaloes who converted the fumble by Waters into the lead 10-9 get it again at the 49-yard line. from Detroit and Tim James, the senior safety, were around the football. Scouting combine of the NFL before the year rated this man as a possible first-round pick, James, and he had a big season, six interceptions, a missed handoff by Brooks. Just a botched handoff. Looks like Meyer goes too far over, and the ball shoots right out of the other side. And James, the safety man, right up on the line of scrimmage to dig for it and recover for Colorado. They take over at the Irish 49 with a 10-9 lead and three and a half minutes remaining in the third period. They give to the fullback, and it's Hemingway pulling to the 46. Michael Stonebreaker in on another tackle for Notre Dame. Stonebreaker, who knows how to Hemingway, win in high ball school carrier. the last three years in high school in Louisiana. His team's won three state championships and went 44 and 0. And now he's a member of the winning his senior group in Notre Dame history. Great heritage. His dad was a tough linebacker, and what a name for one. is so quick. Jay Lewenberg, uh, uh, last year, last year's game, did a fine job on him. But this time, he explodes around him, just does a beautiful job. A two-yard loss on the Look how play. quick he is. He just moves right by people. That's Joe Garton he got by. And Joe Garton, I believive, is a late first-round draft choice. So, time All-American. So, uh, Chris is so quick. He's an NFL player, as well as being a great college player. Of two on the play. Johnson hit from behind and down he goes as Adrian Jones and Chris Zorich again. All the sack, Andre Jones. Number seven. Zorich led the team in tackles for a loss with 12 and sacks with four. Andre Jones had a big piece of that one, number seven. So that was the double recovery by Colorado. They're unable to move. Look at him right through. I'll tell you, Eric Jones, the by the way, may be another Zorich. He's built totally uh, different. Part, but Lou Holtz will someday be a truly great football player. Mile high, and the Rocket will fair catch at his own 22-yard line. Fair catch. So the run. Irish survive another turnover. It remains 10-9. Timeout. Dick Manberg with Bill Walsh, O.J. Simpson, Bob Trumpy, and O.J. has a report on uh, Lou Holtz's moves with the offensive backfield. Well, hey, well thank you, Dick. Evidently, uh, Lou Holtz felt his offensive line needed a lift. He ran up to him, and he told him, we're going with Pettis, that's Jerome Pettis, and Culver, meaning that Ricky Waters and Tony Brooks, uh, Brooks uh, Waters, who's been in the doghouse a number of times in the last two years, won't be seeing much action for the rest of this game. The young kid, the freshman, Pettis, and Culver will be playing most of the 
the rest of this game. And Culver and Bettis, O.J., are two men right off the assembly line in Detroit. Culver, a junior, went to DeForest High School in the Motor City, and Bettis, a freshman from McKinsey High in Detroit. They're big and they're fast. 220 for Culver. Bettis, the freshman, is 235. I really like Culver. He's a 4-4-40. Leading rusher. Nothing wrong with that guy. Culver, number five. Bettis, six. And Meyer comes out even. He's going deep downfield, well covered, and it is intercepted by Greg Thomas, his second of the game. By right, number 27, Greg Thomas. Thomas, who had two all season, gets two in the Orange Bowl tonight. He timed it perfectly. He sat over in that weak safety spot and allowed the rocket to run toward him into the Following post the and just played the ball. You see Rocket Colorado really sprint right past McClellan. McClellan can't stay there, but there's your safety man. That's why he's on the field. Just sitting back there playing that ball. It's the first time all season that Rick Meyer has been intercepted twice in a game. That would serve as a punt, however, as uh, Colorado takes over at the 28-yard line with a minute 24 left in the third. I guess they just de they just uh, depended totally on the rocket speed to do it because there wasn't any effort to get the free safety controlled or accounted for. Boy, uncharacteristic of the Irish. Three straight possessions, a turnover, two fumbles, and an interception. The enemy. Oh, had he cut left. As he was running up his blocker, he had nothing but green grass to the near sideline. Scott Kolkowski makes the tackle. You'll see the free safety just sitting back in the hole and Ismail running a post right toward him. And there wasn't anyone to control that weak safety coming down the field. So you see him looking right at, right at Ismail and going right up for the ball. Tough interception. He had to fight... The rocket fourth. He's a 220-pound guy. He's going to come down with it most often. Second down. The enemy sprints the first down at the 42. And that big offensive line of the Buffaloes opening up some holes. Stonebreaker and Clark make the tackle. Bill McCartney said it's a battle of attrition. They're going at him physically. They're going to wear him down. They've done it to people all year. And just that little touch of Charles Johnson's passing has allowed this team to open up just enough to make these running plays work. Final seconds of the third period. 10-9 Colorado. First down from the Buffalo 42. A little delay and a give to Hemingway. He's to the 39. Make that the 44 of Notre Dame. Another first down. That's the first time we've seen them pull a guard and a tackle. Vanderpool pulled, and they got to the outside. Now, now if you'll see this action by Campbell, this action through the hole, then the counterplay breaking in, and it's set up beautifully for that unbalanced line. Beautiful job. Vanderpool right up in, making the block. Very, very well done. Right away. Thank you. Called at just the right time. The first time in the game they've used it, and they set it up with that unbalanced line running strong side. To play the Hogs of the Washington Redskins have used so effectively in their Super Bowl success years. 10-9, number one Colorado, and we'll return to Miami after a few words from your local station. Greg Thomas with two interceptions today. Those are his numbers, numbers on the season and two interceptions. A good story. Here's a kid from Rolling Hills High School in Rancho Palos Verdes in the Los Angeles area. His dad is a physician. His teams went one and nine and one and nine. The only way Colorado saw him was looking at him against other players that they were attracted to, and he got a late scholarship, and he's really produced. He wanted to quit, stayed because of McCarthy. Oh, big play. Zorich, does he ever make All-America play? Well, they're almost telegraphing that play. Now, Zorich, again, is going to go right by Lewenberg, right by Campbell, in this case, who's a fine blocker. You'll see him come right up the field underneath. Beautiful job of Brian Campbell. And a loss of four for Zorich, who now has nine tackles, seven of them solo. This guy's so quick, he reminds me of Mike Reed, who played for the Bengals in Penn State many, many years ago. You know, Just Lewin super quick. And Lewenberg said, you know, he rolls up, you see those big arms, and you think at first it's because he's a power player. He's a quick player. He says he's lightning quick off the ball. Look at that. The enemy trapped for another loss. It's DeBose and Stonebreaker, the linebackers, to make the stop. Well, Joe Garton and Brian Campbell are getting beaten. That's all there is to it. 
Joe Garton, uh, potentially, potentially a first-round draft choice, but that quickness defensively coming up underneath. Now you'll see this, that quick, quick move, and you'll see the movement inside by the linebacker coming right through over the top and making the play. So both linebackers pursued, with Zorich taking the gap. Well, that DeBose with an athletic leap over the blocker and moved in to make the tackle. Guns it downfield, has a man. It's Pritchard. First down. Making the catches Has Johnson improved that passing game? What poise. Now, Todd Light must have fallen down. I didn't, he just wasn't anywhere to be seen, and he's the guy that's supposed to be over there. You see, he just got beat totally. Rod Smith, they worked against Smith. Smith. And there must have been a rotation to that side. That's all I can figure. You see him looking into the back. No, nope, he should have been deep. He's just totally fooled. You need only one foot in in college. First down on a 29-yard pass play. Johnson to Pritchard. Hemingway goes to the weak side. And gets about five on first down before Rod Smith can come up from his corner to make the hit. Sean Brown blocked beautifully. Campbell pulled and Vanderpool pulled, and uh, the play worked very well. They're collapsing that side of the defense over and over again. Ranked number one, looking for a national title, 10-9, to nine, early in the fourth period. And it's at the Irish 18-yard line, second down and six. White, Stonebreaker, spearheading the charge. They've got to come back with that guard tackle pull counterplay. They've wor worked it twice and is averaging about eight yards a carry. They can bounce off that weak side. They just got to go back to it. Adrian Hagen on the sidelines. A rupture of the patellar tendon on the left knee. And sidelines for the rest of this game. But uh, he came out with a big smile, indicating that uh, whatever happened in that locker room, there still was plenty of time with this Colorado team. They're trying to add to that 10-9 advantage. Pictured in motion on third down. The give to the enemy. And it's well read by the Irish. The bow stayed at home and made the tackle. Number Willie Clark, yeah, Willie really Clark blitzes the weak safety right into the hole. Remember, he did that early in the game. They called it again just at the right time. He's really filling a running lane as a weak safety. So Jim Harper comes on for McCartney to try to give Colorado a four-point lead. This one will be 35-plus yards. And there's a problem as Johnson, the quarterback, and the holder goes to the referee. These are Southwest Conference officials. Frank Shepard, the lead man in the white cap. Wants a different ball, apparently. Well, the offensive teams have their choice of ball. So, for some reason, they either they must not have had the right one. 36 yards. Harper was good from 22. It's blocked. George Williams does it for Notre Dame. And the Irish take over at the 20. teams tonight a major factor the Irish have an extra point block and now a field goal attempt by Colorado is smatted uh, smacked away by big George Williams it looked like the kick was very low it was a bad hole a bad snap because the ball went right into Johnson's side so it wasn't a smooth kick but Vanderpool was beat right up inside right here and no one touched Williams him come right in between people so it most likely i wouldn't want to say directly who's the problem but brian campbell a right guard went too far inside too quickly time out 11 19 to go and still plenty of doubt beautiful shot from the metlife blimp this game is big and so is the metlife blimp one of the world's largest airships measuring 194 feet long about two-thirds the length of the football field 67 feet high and bringing us those terrific overhead shots. Notre Dame snuffing a chance for Colorado to enlarge in their lead. It remains 10 to 9 and Meyer takes over at the 20. Rodney Culver. And he Rodney gains Culver 5 to the 25. Outside. The 
Irish in the second half trying to self-destruct, but the defense has bailed out the offense. It reminds you how little statistics mean when you finally get to the last game or the championship game. The Irish offense had only turned the ball over 11 times all season, and now they've done it three times in three possessions. Three times in three possessions. Second and five for Meyer. He gets inside Alfred Williams, but there to pick him off Meyer's is Greg rambles. Beaker. Boy, did Beaker save Alfred Williams. Alfred over-penetrated, went right by the ball, and gave, gave Meyer a chance to run underneath him, but Beaker is quick enough to get over there and make the stop. I think Alfred Game Williams is going to have to play more physical football if he wants to really continue as a great a great player in the National Football League. He doesn't, just doesn't play physical. Well, he doesn't carry much weight. He's 6'6 and only 232, he told us. He wanted to be 255, just can't seem to put on weight. talked to Jerry Hagan. I asked him how the kid's doing. He said, great, because our game plan was to run check with me's at the line of scrimmage on every single play. So Bill Walsh, this Johnson kid has done a sensational job in the second half. Well, he's a bright guy, and he's played well every time he's had a chance. And he's brought this team back into the winning picture here with his passing. And he comes out throwing on first down. Dumps it off to the enemy on the sidelines. Well done, and the enemy Picks up nearly 20 yards. This guy's got an amazing poise for not playing that much, but he's got a natural instinct for timing and throwing the ball. It's, it's very, very well done. To be honest with you, Hagen would not have done that. He would not have done that. Yeah, he really played with the one Notre Dame defender, didn't he? Well, you see him fake the run, come back out to the outside, watch the natural move to his left, and he has a choice to make. This is all of Montana. Very Andre, well done. Andre Jones, he let him come in to make the hit and just, just hit a little lollipop pass, almost a little basketball shot to the enemy. On first down, the enemy. And the senior the enemy is about the three. Ball. Don Grimm, the younger brother of Russ Grimm, the four-time pro bowler of the Redskins, made the stop, number 36. A year ago, uh, Colorado was running the option play about every other down. This year, they're concentrating on running inside, using those big guards and center, uh, both tackles, big active guys to Three control the ball. The but again, they're going to have to come back with Second a, and seven a and guard tackle counterplay and, because that's the one thing that seems to be breaking open. Each team with a touchdown and a field goal, but Ronnie Bradford of Colorado blocked the extra point try of the Irish, and that's the difference in the game. The enemy points kick off the blocks, and he's strong yeah, as he carries yeah. men with him to the 40, to the 50, and a first down. Brian Campbell blocked down on Zorich and eliminated him from the play. And meanwhile, Notre Dame blitzed. And when you blitz, 
there just isn't any pursuit. Now you watch this block right here makes a difference. But also people are blitzing on the backside and don't pursue to make the tackle. Very, very well done. And Hemingway again doing a great job on Stonebreaker. Scott Kolkowski came off holding a shorter, a shoulder. And is replaced by Devon McDonald. First down at the Irish 49. The enemy again. Fumbles and the Irish recover at the 46. Here's a football. of the year. He has small hands, big legs, and a short forearm. Bill McCartney says that's part of the problem. He just can't cradle that ball in there the way a lot of men can. And they say against Notre Dame, the penalty, the initial signal we saw was Colorado. He may have, he may have signaled, excuse me, signaled the wrong way. The players seem to act that way. The enemy just at the wrong time. Gosh, so much hanging on it, and the ball just flew out of there. I don't think there was contact. That the ball. Personal foul on the white. Depot foul, personal foul on the black. Post possession, so it'll remain in Notre Dame's possession as the enemy is hit by Stonebreaker, who led the Irish with three forced fumbles this year. Watch 42. Yep, he gets his helmet in there and knocks it free. And the youngster, Willie Clark, recovers. The ball would just sort of shred it out. Colorado's first turnover. They did have a muff by the kicker, Ruin, early in the game on a punt. There's the skirmish that led to the double foul. Ricky Waters and Tony Brooks, the seniors, are back in at the midpoint of the fourth quarter. Meyer. Is it good? No, out of bounds. Meyer's pass incomplete. Dave McLuhan on the coverage of Ismail. Ismail. So, one of the many psychological moves by Lou Holtz telling his youngsters you're going to play you seniors sit down and letting them sit for a while and then figuring now's the time with a game in the balance to give the experience the opportunity to win it for Notre Dame and Waters can break and make the big play where the other guys were physical and strong Waters makes people miss to pitch that ball out. That's been his history all year because he has the great speed outside. It's against the Irish for clipping, a big one. Lou Holtz now getting the message, won't like the word. On the outside, still second down. We'll see where they mark it from. The 50-yard line back, make it the 45 of Colorado. So from the spot where the play ended, the 15 yards, to the Irish 40, where it'll be second down and 16. At some point, there's going to be a reverse play in this ball game, and it's going to, it's going to go. We had one in the first half, but at some point, they're going to come back with it. Everybody's working so hard, pursuing so hard. Ishmael to the right. For the screen pass at this point, I think that's the kind of thing they'll go with. Meyer just isn't getting the ball downfield accurately at all. Part of it's a pass rush. So the screen pass with some outside running. Got a chance. Thus far in the second half, the Rocket has been held in check by Colorado. He's changing the play. Back in on the 
trouble even if he'd run with that ball because he got outside the contain the Denver people uh, how didn't know where he was he lost track of him for Colorado that was well played downfield by Davis time well it could have really cost him had he been there early Hendricks last punt near an Orange Bowl record held by Ike Pickle of Mississippi State in 1937. He had one for 82. Big roll, I understand. Had a big roll. Did you research that or was that at the at your fingertips? Your stats, Elliot oh. Kelp. No pressure. What a punt. Does he have a leg? Number one ranked Colorado has the ball and 628 to kill. Colorado leads 10-9, and here's a very big play in the game. Ronnie Bradford, extra point. Unblocked. Blocks an extra point. Rare to see. Just his speed and quickness, and they had a plan because he really came after it. That was after the Irish had scored in the second period on a two-yard run by Ricky Waters. 10-9 and Bradford's play could be the difference in a possible national championship, but there's six and a half minutes to go, and Colorado goes to work from their own 16-yard line with backup quarterback Charles Johnson under center. The enemy fumbled on his last carry. Good yardage to the 23, Andre Jones with a tackle. He's stopped by Andre Bill Jones. McCartney preached to his team, related to us over and over. In the fourth quarter, they're going to dominate physically. Of course, Lou Holtz said the same thing. But this is where Colorado can demonstrate their number one, right here, dominating the line of scrimmage. Obviously, they haven't scored that much. But if they physically can do it and show the poise they can do it, they've got to be the number one team. Colorado now with the longest current winning streak in college football among major schools. Nine in a row after uh, Texas also with nine going into today. Beaten handily by Miami. Like Texas and Colorado tied with nine. The enemy breaking a tackle and fights for a first down at the 32. Willie Clark finally made the tackle after George Williams couldn't bring him down. Williams penetrated and forced the enemy to change direction, but still everyone else was blocked well enough for him to get away with it. You'll see him right here coming to the inside and really unblocked. Right underneath everything, makes there to make the big play of the game. Stormbreaker over, over pursues and uh, the enemy now demonstrating his strength and durability. Five minutes and 20 seconds left. First down, Colorado. in this game, complimenting the enemy's 79. A good one-two punch for Colorado. And he went right up the field, Dick. He just took it straight down the field. Didn't get smart with it. Just went right down the field. Great job, job by Vanderpool. He not only took his man, but he scraped off on a linebacker. The enemy now. Two or three. George Williams, another tackle. You mentioned Vanderpool, well, number 72, the right home. tackle. He's from also considerable there. heritage. His great uncle is the famed Cornelius Dutch Warmerdam, the first man to pole vault 15 feet back in 1940. Still uh, watching the night up in Fresno. He used the bamboo pole. And Vanderpool uh, from a dairy farm in Southern California. And Chino's dad said, what are you going out for football for? You're never going to make a living there. You just stay here and raise the Holsteins. Well, at 6'8 and 300, he had quite a future in the NFL. Here's the reverse. Here's that reverse. 45, 40, and Stonebreaker losing the helmet as he right. makes Pritchard. the tackle, but it's another Colorado first down. Gee, did Pritchard and use good judgment getting underneath the contain man? He came back with it, and he was going to be cut and off. He did a beautiful job of coming underneath. Down. You'll see the ball pitched out like an option play, but the, the reverse man, Pritchard's coming the other way, and watch the contain, and there, there's uh, Vanderpool again doing a fine job of just walling out the contain man. And the clock continues to run, 350, 349, as you see Zorich battling away, some good blocking by Hemingway. Now it's so critical to hold on to the ball. I'd give that ball to Hemingway every down. Take 
take the time off the clock. Hemingway gets the call. Look at him moving for a yardage, a gain of nearly six. This drive, starting at the Colorado 16-yard line, has now consumed three full minutes. Well, this is what McCartney talked about, and it's... It, it looks like a prophecy in a sense. They have that much confidence. But again, any kind of a turnover. And Vanderpool and Solomon, two fine big tackles. Solomon has come on after having been a defensive player to start as a senior. Maybe a, as high as a second round draft choice. Vanderpool, Joe Garton, All-American. Campbell and Lewenberg, very, very well done. Stacked up by Cole Kowski, who's back in the game at the 30. That'll be a yard and a half shy of a first down, and the Irish will spend a timeout. Stops the clock, not yet now, at 2.44. So when we return, third and a short two for Colorado at the Irish 30. Two minutes and 44 seconds remain. Colorado 10, Notre Dame 9. Gary Barnett has made his decision on third and one and a half inside the Irish 30-yard line. I'm sure they had a short yardage play ready. I think that counter play that they've run before just twice would be the thing to call. You know this, Notre Dame is going to be bringing everybody. They're not going to concern themselves with a pass at this point. The enemy. He's got the first down. And with that, the clock can run unless the Irish stop it it stopped for the first down and a big first down it is for the enemy george hemingway has redeemed himself Dave. he really has a year ago losing him might have might have cost them the game but now his blocking has been so concrete he's been taking those those excellent linebackers out of there leading the play right here up inside and he does a fine job of going right in there and look at that great block on debose beautiful job Enemy following to the 27-yard line. Clock running, 2:22, 2:21. Will Colorado win? And if they do, will they be number one in the nation? Georgia Tech fans say they should be. Oh, look at the jam up there as Willie Clark again on that safety blitz ran right into the hole, and uh, Hemingway is stuffed. And timeout. Hemingway the Irish with 2:11 remaining. Number 32, Willie Clark, blitzing safety. Just hold to on 30. to the ball. Just hold on to the ball and take as much time off that clock. Force Notre Dame to try to do it in one or two plays. Then you have to walk out, watch out for, for Rocket. But don't lose the ball here. Yeah, all the excitement of this finale of the collegiate football season. And now it's the NFL as NBC Sports turns to the wild card game. Well, for a football fan, whether you're for Colorado or for Notre Dame, this has been a delightful way to start this 1991 year. Notre Dame, one of the top teams in the nation again this year, challenging the number one ranked team of Colorado. 10-9 for the Buffaloes. And this next uh, couple of plays may well decide a national championship. The Irish, right from game one, remember, against the University of Michigan have shown they can win in the final minute. Rick Meyer is a sophomore, a talented passer. Second down, 13. And Johnson's going to throw, and he eats it at the 40. A strange call. A strange call. A strange call. Zorich makes the play along with Greg Davis, the safety man. If they punt, they can get the Irish down in close. That's the only thing you can say for this. Zorich getting up slowly, and he's okay. But another big play. play by the All-American from Chicago, Chris Zorich. Timeout, 1.55 to go. Is for offensive coordinator Gary Barnett backfiring, and Colorado probably moved out of field goal range now. They're at the Irish just inside the 40-yard line. Third down and 23. I'm sure they'll run with the ball and take time off that clock. The Irish with no. Oh, they're going to pass, and Johnson... Has to eat it again. George Williams with a sack. He and Zorich have tormented Colorado all night. I believe, Dick, it was a quarterback draw. It looked as though Johnson stopped and wanted to run, but Notre Dame was just coming up the field too hard. They had too many people coming. And you'll see Johnson want, I think he wants, yeah, see the blocking there? He wants to come forward. And Lewenberg.
Pittsburgh was going up the field to block, so he was downfield. It was a quarterback throw. Irish will put 10 men on the line of scrimmage and go after Tom Ruin, who will let the clock run down. 14 on the play clock. 11-10, he'll chew up as much as he can. The game clock down to 113. And they might even take the five-yard delay a game. Apparently, that's going to be the case. And there's the whistle and the flag. So one minute, five seconds. Colorado separate the Colorado Buffaloes from their national championship dream. And the Irish with the rocket, Ismail, standing back waiting for the punt with no timeouts for Lou Holtz. will have to go to the arm of Rick Meyer. I'm sure Rowan will kick out of bounds. He'll punt out of bounds. He has to. First priority is to get the kick away. The Irish will send 10 men. And then they back off. Well done. The Rocket at the 10. And he's corralled for a moment. Breaks into the clear. One man to beat, and he won't get him. The Rocket, Ismael, has done it again. Touchdown, Notre Dame. I see a flag, Dick. I see a flag. There is a flag. So hold on. Sensational individual effort by Ragib the Rocket. Ismail, 91 yards, but will it count? On the field. He is absolutely a brilliant, brilliant athlete. He but had, it won't count. He had one chance, and he did it. And he'll have 35 seconds. And that's all. So that play consumed a lot of time. The punt was 44 yards. And Lou Holtz is saying, that much time ran off before you stopped the clock? By penalty. So Meyer and the Irish will start well back in their own end. Let's see if we can pick up the clip. 21-yard line is where they put the ball down. 26 coming to the inside. Well, he did make a difference. It was contact. Be the helmet behind the body, so it was contact. No question about it. But had he not touched the Colorado player, unlikely he would have gotten Holy the rocket. Holy 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 and they will put more time back on the clock. Too much ran off. It'll be 43 seconds. shackled no timeouts for Meyer and now instead of a celebration of a incredible touchdown run by the rocket Ismail they'll have to start from the 21 for when he gets in the open well as Lou Holt said I don't know how fast he is in fact I didn't realize how fast the rocket was till I saw him playing tennis by himself <laughs> consumed 36 left they had a play that time where the rocket was going to wait and delay and then come in over the middle and Colorado just picked it up beautifully but Jerry Rice play try to get him in front of all that deep deep right, and want everybody the downfield then hope he can run with it again. it'll be second and nine of 23 gain of a yard for Meyer please remain in the spectator areas following the completion of the ball game tonight left again with the rocket the middle man Only. here he comes again Meyer in the crowd can't get it off accurately as he's Meyer hit from behind by Alfred Williams again they're trying a play that, where the ball would be completed four or five yards deep then hoping for a big run Colorado is uh, a little vulnerable down the field now you see both receivers coming down underneath just took too long. That's all there is to it. 30 seconds left. Third and nine. Bill McCartney, a protege of the great former Michigan coach Bo Schembechler. So borrows many of the techniques to learn underneath a famed Wolverine coach. Colorado is playing with two deep safeties. 
You'd like to think they play with three. Myra down the middle. Oh, my, what a hit on Tony Smith from Chad Brown. Broken up by number 34, Darnell Brooks. Correction, Chad Brown. Brown. Chad Look Brown at this collision course with Smith. Effort by Smith, and now the Irish down to one down, fourth and nine and 24 seconds. It appears that McLuhan is shadowing the rocket. That's to the tight end, Derek Brown. He can't get out of bounds. He gets a first down. That'll stop the clock at the 38-yard line with 16 seconds. First down, the Irish the have Irish. to be quick to get to the ball when it's marked ball so that uh, they don't waste line. a second. And Lou Holtz wants him to down the ball immediately. Game on the pass to Brown. The referee is not, now he winds it up. And 13 seconds, Myers time for two, maybe three plays for Meyer. 13 seconds remaining. This is where the Mm. Clock stopping on first downs really makes the collegiate it game really exciting. And, and the uh, referee, uh, or excuse me, the umpire waited until everyone was set before he stepped away. So you've got every advantage at the end of the game. Right now there are two deep safeties for the for Colorado, and they're not especially fast guys. So you, you'd think that Notre Dame would put everyone, flood them downfield with only two people back there. Somebody's going to be open in the seam. Myra sends the rocket to the bottom of your screen. Intercepted by Colorado, Dion Figures. And Figures runs out the clock. And the Figures may be number one for Colorado. Figures. And that closes the ball game. Colorado 10, Notre Dame 9. Congratulations.